For thousands of years now, humans have directed their awareness towards better understanding the nature of human consciousness. Observations regarding the nature of consciousness have been written in the Bhagavad Gita to ancient Greek texts and we're still exploring what it means to this day, where we now not only explore consciousness philosophically, but also scientifically. Neuroscientists examine the different structures of the brain, their connectivity, and brain waves in an attempt to better understand consciousness and pinpoint its source. And they've made some amazing discoveries on how the brain works, which has advanced our understanding of human consciousness. Fundamentally though, is it possible for the scientific method to ever succeed in this task? It's important to ask that question because modern science now is largely a reductionist, dissecting process that has lost sight of the wholeness and connectedness of everything, and that isn't how science used to be done. Natural philosophers across time like Pythagoras, Leonardo da Vinci, and David Bohm first attempted to understand the universe as it is holistically and then apply the observations they made as to how things operate to their scientific work. A key hallmark of consciousness is that it's a force that's greater than the sum of its parts, and by its very nature, it can't be dissected and analyzed into understanding. Perhaps the missing piece that takes our understanding of consciousness to the next level isn't some new structure found inside the brain, but rather it's found in the energy fields that surround all of us. And this is the holographic theory of consciousness. Hi, I'm your host Stefan, and today we're going to explore what the holographic theory of consciousness is the evidence for it, and why I think it's currently the best framework we have for understanding the nature of human consciousness. The holographic theory of consciousness is based on the idea of the holographic universe. It's very simple at its core. It's the idea that all the information of the universe is contained in every point within the universe. Now this may seem a wild suggestion to the uninitiated, but there is a lot of evidence that points to this being the true nature of reality. Consider the physics of electromagnetic waves. Carried by photons, electromagnetic waves store information in their wave characteristics and they travel at the speed of light in a vacuum. Some sources of electromagnetic energy, like a light bulb or a radio station, emit their waves in all directions. Whereas other sources of electromagnetic energy, like a laser, beam it very specifically in one direction. The light from a light bulb is an example of non-coherent energy. All the photons being emitted travel in their own direction like the individual people in a large crowd. Whereas the light of a laser is very coherent. All the photons are in phase and march together like soldiers. All electromagnetic energy, regardless of how it is emitted, becomes part of the local and universal interference pattern. An interference pattern is created when two or more waves interact together, exactly like how multiple ripples on a pond create unique and interesting patterns. If space-time is the surface of the pond, then the ripples are electromagnetic and gravity waves. A curious phenomenon about interference patterns is that they contain all the information from every wave across the whole pond within each subsection. The reason for this is because energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So while an electromagnetic wave can become incredibly weak, it still contains within its waveform all the information that it had when it was stronger. With enough sampling and a sensitive enough instrument, the information contained in any electromagnetic wave can still be observed, even if stacked on top of numerous other waves in an interference pattern. The reason the physics of electromagnetism is important in our understanding of consciousness is because the brain is a bioelectrical organ. In fact, the entire human body has evolved to interact with electromagnetic energies. Electromagnetic waves alter DNA expression, cellular voltage gradients, brain waves, and the entire bioelectrical flow of the nervous system. One of the reasons the human body evolved this way is because electromagnetic waves have an infinite information storage capacity. The brain is our primary information processing organ, and we see in it at the cellular scale the equipment such as magnetosomes and neurons that are needed to interact with electromagnetic energies. The human brain even creates its own electromagnetic waves, these brain waves existing in the 0 to 40 plus hertz range. Clearly, we're bioelectrical to our core. If holographic theory is correct, and all the electromagnetic information of the whole universe is contained in every part of it via interference patterns, then the function of the brain becomes simpler to understand. 
Under the holographic theory of consciousness, the brain isn't responsible for all cognition, memories, emotions, and everything by itself. Instead, it's more of a transmitter and receiver that simultaneously writes to and reads information from the electromagnetic interference pattern that surrounds us at all times. Evidence that the brain functions this way comes from the fact that people who suffer devastating brain injuries first off often don't die, and second their cognitive function isn't as altered as you may think would occur. A famous example of this phenomenon is that of Phineas Gage, a railroad foreman who in 1848 experienced a crazy workplace accident where an iron rod blasted through his skull, destroying much of his left frontal lobe. After the accident, Phineas Gage was remarkably up walking and talking within just minutes, though he later had medical difficulties. Following this massive brain damage, his personality changed remarkably, but over the remaining 12 years of his life, his normal personality began to return, and it's said that around the time of his death, he was relatively himself again. This story, and there are many others like it, nicely illustrates the remarkable plasticity of the brain, and how even if parts are removed or destroyed, function can still be maintained to a relatively normal degree. In the holographic theory of consciousness, our consciousness is contained in the information field all around us and isn't stored 100% locally in the brain or the body. In the case of Phineas Gage, his brain damage affected his ability to connect to his consciousness field, but as he healed, his brain reorganized itself in order to fully reconnect. With our consciousness a part of the universal electromagnetic field, it's strongest near the tether of your body, but it also exists across the entire universe. That is a profound concept, and it really demonstrates the interconnectedness of everything and everyone. Let's listen to the late theoretical physicist David Bohm to better help us understand this. Uh, another view would be to say that uh, the brain may have opened to the whole universe in some way, not merely through the senses, but in some other way. You see, that, that's a thing you could explore, right? Some so people the brain are, might be a tuning device. Or, or yes, an antenna. It might contain something like an antenna, which picks up, is able to pick it up and unfold it, right? <laughs> As the radio does, you see the radio, the wave comes through the room and very, very weak, and it goes through the antenna, and, and the whole radio set picks it up and, make, and unfolds it into an image, let's say, like the television. Hmm. Then you have to have the particular set in order to pick up the particular wave. Yeah, well, or else the set must be also uh, not only the right structure, but also not occupied with too many other things. Right? Now, if it's holding one program, it can't hold another. <laughs> what David Bohm shines a light on here is that your brain is not only capable of receiving the standard experience of consciousness, but that it can also be tuned to the more subtle layers of your consciousness and all of reality. Again, David Bohm. So earlier you are suggesting that our brain and our consciousness is affected by everything in the universe, and so this means in some way that our consciousness must be in contact with the rest of the universe. Well, that may be. You see, we haven't proved it. Some people feel it. Uh, it's quite, uh, from the point of view of my suggestion of the implicate order, it's quite possible, you see, that we have a contact with the universe which is deeper than the senses, you see. That is, we have a certain contact through the senses, which also involves the implicate order. And then there may be a deeper contact, uh, which we are ignoring now because the ordinary content is filling the brain. You see, there was a case of, say, these, remember these computer viruses, they recently talked about. Now, they spread the activity to all the computers. Now, what they do is they occupy the computer so thoroughly it can't respond to what people, the keyboard. Right? So the, uh, the point is that if our brain is occupied with all sorts of ordinary things, then it will not respond to this uh, other level. Right? I make that suggestion. Now, therefore, our ordinary way of life would be against uh, being sensitive to that. So how can we cultivate this greater sensitivity to the more subtle layers of consciousness and reality? It's a simple equation of signal to noise. Sense electromagnetic waves from the whole universe surround us of various magnitudes, connecting and receiving information from a specific source, say a person or the Schumann resonances, is as simple as tuning your brain and biofield to the same frequency and then matching its sensitivity. For example, the electromagnetic waves that the heart generates have a nanotesla strength, 
And if you want to empathetically and emotionally connect to others when in close contact with them, your biofields must each be in coherence with each other and not in disorder. If you do this, you can experience deep emotional connections with others in a way that perhaps you've never experienced before. If you want to connect to the Earth's naturally produced energy fields, known as the Schumann resonances, which exist at the same frequencies and picotesla strengths as human brain waves, then your brainwave activity must be of the right frequency and in coherence. There are multiple ways to increase your bioelectrical sensitivity, and the most effective practices that I have found to help with this are meditation, grounding, yoga, and breath work. The holographic theory of consciousness is the best and simplest explanation of consciousness that I've discovered yet. And I hope this video has helped you not only understand the nature of consciousness better, but it has also helped you better understand yourself. What are your thoughts on the holographic theory of consciousness? Does this resonate with you? What experiences have you had personally that fall in line with what it claims? I would like to hear your thoughts, so please share them in the comments below. Relevant research papers, books, and interviews are linked in the video description. And there you'll also find my comprehensive ebook, Schumann Resonances in Human Bioelectricity, which is either available for pre-order or purchase depending on when you watch this. In the next video, we discuss why some people feel subtle energies while others don't, and I'll share with you five signs that you may be bioelectrically sensitive. You can also check out my playlist here on Schumann Resonances and Subtle Energies to learn more about this topic. I've been your host, Stefan. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.